Hey everybody, Christ is risen. I thought today we'd do something a little different. I'd take you on a tour to see what's behind the iconostasis. All right, so we're up on the Solea now, and rather than going straight behind the Iconostasis, I thought uh, some of you might be interested to know what's in the room over there. So that's where we're gonna head next. So this back here is a little office. Uh, it's where the priests and the clergy and the, the chanters as well get ready to perform the service each Sunday. This right here. Oh, hey. <laughs> Nerd alert! This is our, uh, where we keep all of our vestments. See, mine are right here folded up inside of these white cloths. And then these are Father Tom's different sets of vestments. Back here, we've got a little cabinet with some older gospel books, blessing crosses, candle holders, um, right under there, those are some cups that we use during weddings if uh, somebody doesn't bring their own. We've got some icons, another patent, uh, container for holding holy water, the, the Zeon, the hot water for communion. Some more blessing crosses. All right, so now we'll go to a place that uh, my Kumbaro's mom once described as the place where the men go. Now we're going to go ahead and enter into the holy altar area. Let's go, come on. So the first thing you'll encounter is this little alcove. Um, we've got Christ, uh, the highest humility icon. As we continue on in to the altar proper, there is the altar table. And we've got a, a pretty large table, a pretty high table, um, in my own experience, which is, which is good. So I'll cross, uh, be careful as I enter here. This area right here, in front of the altar, is reserved solely for the clergy. So even the altar boys, if they come back here, do not cross in front of the altar. But we'll go ahead and, and show you. So this is the cover that we have over the Holy Gospel. The Gospel book is always on the altar in an Orthodox church. You can always find the Gospel book. And here it is. Let's see, it's made of silver, so it's really shiny. Here is the resurrection side. And if it's a Saturday night or a Sunday morning service, this is the side that is facing up. Otherwise, if we turn it over, you see this side has the crucifixion. This is the side that will be facing up during the week. Um, because it's on Sundays that we celebrate the resurrection. So that's why the resurrection is showing on that day. And since we're going to have a liturgy here Thursday, I will go ahead and turn it to the crucifixion side. Underneath here is the epitaphios, uh, this piece here. It's what gets placed inside of the cuvuclion the big wooden structure that we decorate with flowers uh, during Holy Friday. Uh, and it's here, it stays on the altar after Pascha uh, until Ascension. Otherwise, it's hanging up back in that room there. 
This here is our Paschal candle. We'll light. We have the other candles here as well, the altar candles. Uh, these candles are actually, they, they use oil rather than burning wax or anything. As you can see here, the top comes off and we pour the oil down in there and then the wick lights. Another important feature on the altar is this little silver structure right here. This is known as the artophoria, or the, the thing that holds the bread. And inside of there, we have pre-sanctified bread. Um, bread that has already been prayed over and where we ask God to change it into the body and blood of Christ. Um, I say blood because it's dipped in wine before it's put in here. And it's put in here on Holy Thursday is when what in here uh, is replaced. And it's used throughout the year if we need to make hospital visits or things like that. I'm being very reverent because this is Holy Communion right here. Right behind the Arthophoria is a candle. And this candle is always lit on the altar to represent the presence of Christ here. And if any of you have altar, uh, oil candles at home, this is, this is using olive oil as its fuel source. It's always a good idea, let's see if you can see it, to have a layer of water in the bottom. I don't know if you can really see. Just in case the, the oil burns down, it'll hit the water and put the flame out, rather than heating up the glass and possibly cracking the glass. Right behind the altar, we have a bishop's throne, Sintronon. and on it, what's wrapped up in here is the icon of the body of Christ that hangs on the cross on Holy Thursday. Um, and we've taken it off of the cross on Holy Friday, wrapped it in a new clean linen shroud, just like Joseph did in uh, scripture and it sits back here right behind the altar also until ascension. Now behind this curved wall, there's a little walkway so that you can cross over to the other side without having to go right behind the altar table. And also back here, we have storage for a lot of books. Um, there's some Bibles back here. There's different service books for different services, uh, some chant books, the chanters they'll use, uh, the icons that we put out in the narthex for the different feast days, they're all kept back here as well. And then we've got storage for like the Q-tips and cotton balls for unction back here. We've got uh, where we keep, well you can't see down there, but where we keep all of the wine that people donate to the church for us to use during Holy Communion. Where the altar boy robes are all hung up. These are coverings for the altar for the different liturgical seasons. And then back here is where we keep the baptismal font which as far as I know has been here for a very, very long time. I know it was here when Father Tom came to the church um, over 30 years ago, and many children are baptized in it, the same font that their parents were baptized in. And then we've got some charcoal for the censer, uh, and here's where we keep all of our incense, and then service books the altar boys. This side, fire extinguisher, just in case. Fire! Oh, fire! Oh my goodness! What's the procedure? <laughs> and here we have the sensor. And the sensor has 12 bells on it, the number symbolizing the 12 apostles, and there's bells on it to make a joyous sound so that we can always remember the joy that we should have.
The next area here, this is the prothesis. This is where the service of proskimidi takes place. Um, that's the service of the preparation of the holy gifts for communion. So I can move this here and you see we've got the chalice, uh, all the coverings, the kalimata and the spoon, and then the paten that it sits on. Then back here, right behind the prothesis, this is where we keep the cross, the fans, the candles that the altar boys use. And then in here, we've got just a little kitchen um, where we heat the water up for the Holy Zeon. A little bowl that we put the andidoro in. That is the tour of what's behind the Iconostasis. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, as always, like the video if you liked it. Leave a comment if you want to say something. And we'll see you next time. God bless.